Welcome, welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the new moon in Leo on August 4th, 2024 at 12 degrees, 34 minutes. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us to connect with our multidimensional uh, information and layers that are available to us through galactic astrology. Many of us are very curious about what else what more is out there to relate to uh, at the multidimensional levels of the fixed stars. And that is what I'm including in this video. So welcome. In this video, you'll receive three energetic themes that I've pulled out from the new moon chart. And also at the end, I'll give you three questions. Uh, should you want to integrate this new moon in Leo energy some more? So let's get started. Are you interested in your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There is a link in the description box below. This new moon in Leo is a huge invitation to become more of ourselves. It is a wide open. It's almost like a window is standing open for us to look out what's next and what else can we grow into. This window is open because now we are uh, in a period of time where we are invited to liberate ourselves from uh, illusions, things that are not real, and also the uh, perceptions and perspectives that we have that are not serving us anymore. So this window that is wide open is inviting us to... Um, I would call it to, to become even more real and uh, present in our lives. And that is sometimes the way we become more of ourselves, the courage that we gain by uh, releasing some of the illusions that we have built up. This new moon in Leo is making a powerful square to the fixed star a crux in the crux constellation, which is also called the Southern Cross. And we'll talk some more about a crux in a minute. But this new moon is also ruled by the sun. So there is an invitation, a highlight on this new moon as something very expansive. And I'll talk more about that in the three themes coming up. Part of the story is to release our idea that we are separate from everyone else, but also it's a deep letting go energy as part of this new moon in Leo that is removing some of the self-absorption that uh, many of us are deeply ingrained with. And that is part of the potential illusion that we have subscribed to uh, many ways. And it's different for everyone what that means. But I'm bringing in a uh, open window here at this new moon for you to uh, choose whether you're going to open wider, whether you're going to peek out and see what's beyond that window out in the yard, <laughs> maybe, but also to invite a new perspective that is much, much bigger than uh, the potential ego-driven um, perspectives that we so often feel are familiar. That invitation is an expansion that goes beyond our separate selves. It is basically to step into the knowing that we are worth it and our planet, planet Earth, is worth it and everyone on it is worth it, uh, every, every living being. So that's a bigger um, invitation that is available to us here at this new moon in Leo. Uh, and it's fueled by um, immense uh, energy, which I'm going to go through in our uh, themes coming up. Uh, Leo is the heart of the lion. It is the courage, the epitome of courage. And very much a signature at this new moon is to fire up that within ourselves and in our environment too. 
before we go into talking more about the constellation of crux and also the new moon chart, I'd like to share what the energetic themes are. The first theme is light code expansion. And here we're going to talk about a powerful fire trine. There's a lot of fire energy at this new moon. And this first theme is focused on uh, the fact that light codes are getting downloaded now through uh, alignments to the great attractor and more. The second theme is healing messages from the heart. And here we have a powerful message uh, involving Venus at 29 degrees of Leo at the time. This is a very powerful uh, theme involving Hydra, involving Regulus, the Royal Star Regulus, but also Mercury's uh, retrograde that's coming up and the square, the powerful square between Venus and Uranus at this time and Pleiades. So there's a lot to go over there in that theme number two. The third theme is Orion energy integration. And here, uh, Orion Regal is playing a big role, but also the great attractor. And we have Saturn and Neptune squaring Orion constellation between now and until the eclipse season. So we'll talk more about that in uh, theme three coming up. So first, I want to talk about the powerful square between the new moon and the fixed star Acrux in the Crux constellation, also called the Southern Cross. This is associated with energy around justice and mystic energy. So also, uh, it's associated with light codes and downloads of light codes. Here, we have... Uh, Crocs often visible in the southern hemi hemisphere, and it's been uh, found that the constellation is pictured in Machu Picchu, for example. It's been used by indigenous tribes for navigation, but also to determine seasons. So here, this symbolism and myth is suggesting to us that this open window is a download of light codes at this time uh, that is meant to expand us. And we'll talk more about that in the first theme. But it, it basically is a, a square that is opening us. It's a square that wants to stretch us, right? The square is kind of a little bit of tension, but this is an invitation to expand and a, a portal at the same time. Now, uh, these light codes are often also associated with grids on earth, uh, grid work. So what we're experiencing at this time is uh, a boost, a download to earth's grid work, um, energy centers across the planet, basically, that is also supporting us to upgrade, to um, reach a higher vibration if, if we so are uh, uh, aligning with that at this time. But all of that taken together is that open window, that sense of there's something beyond what I currently have experienced. And this new moon in Leo is so powerful that way. And we'll talk more about this fiery energy that's supporting this download and recharge um, of Earth's grid structure, basically. Acrux particularly also is associated with divine feminine energy. So this is also a... Um, likely a download from the cosmic heart, Venus type of energy, right? So this is also a guidance for us uh, stepping into more uh, divine feminine guidance and energy on earth. And what you'll notice also in the second theme is that this energy is coming in with a force, with passion and focus. So yeah, this is a, definitely that Venus at 29 degrees that we see in this chart. It, we're going to talk more about that in theme two. So here we have the constellation of Crux. It almost looks like a cross, and it's called the Southern Cross with fixed star A Crux there at the southern position. 
and in the image there next to the sky map, you get a feel for what the indigenous ancient tribes used to navigate and identify the constellation of Crux. Another piece of information about Crux is that the constellation is actually included in some uh, nation's flags, such as Australia, New Zealand, and Brazil. So that is a um, testament to the importance of the constellation. So at this new moon, uh, this square is providing us with a powerful opening, a powerful portal to invite that divine feminine energy and the light codes that are now ready to influence us here uh, at this next phase in our evolution. So let's take a look at the first energetic theme that I called light codes expansion. Here we have the first theme, Light Codes Expansion. And this, this is a powerful fire grand trine with the new moon involved. If we start there with the new moon at 12 degrees of Leo, making a beautiful trine to Andromeda Alparats at 14 degrees of Aries. And then we have the connection there through a trine also with the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. And we also have a connection here through the trine with the new moon and Andromeda Alparats that makes this fire, grand fire trine uh, with Scorpius Antares, which is a royal star at 10 degrees of Sagittarius. And this, this is a powerful fire trine in the sense that uh, Andromeda Alparats is associated with energy around freedom from limitations. So uh, simplified, that is a, a fiery energy in itself. The great attractor is the integrator of this trio, the integration of perspectives, integration of um, everyone's views, if we, if we describe it that. It's a unifying energy that is engaged here. And Antares is associated with the element of water and also the golden ray. It's a royal star in the Scorpius uh, constellation. And we have a powerful activation of the stargate between Aldebaran in the Taurus constellation and Antares in the Scorpius constellation. I'll talk about that in a minute here. This is a new... Um, firing up a rejuvenation of our sense of uh, liberation. And it's supported by also unity energy through the, the great attractor here and also Antares in many ways. So this is uh, um, what supports this light code expansion uh, at its core. And here we also have the activation at this new moon of the stargate between Taurus Aldebaran and Scorpius Antares there at 10 degrees of Gemini and Sagittarius respectively. The royal star Antares here is bringing in the resilience in this process of downloading new vibrational light codes here and bringing in the focus on the opposite side, the royal star Aldebaran in the Taurus constellation is associated with energy of courage, of leadership, of responsibility. So this stargate with Aldebaran at 10 degrees of Gemini and Antares at 10 degrees of Sagittarius, as you may notice, Mars is right there at nine degrees of Gemini now, activating this stargate and allowing these light codes to be downloaded in the environment of this grand fire trine being fired up. And here we have the Stargate. I put uh, the two sky maps of Aldebaran and Antares in parallel here, just to symbolize this opening, this uh, portal that is available to us now with Mars's activation of the, this pair 
And here you can see how you can locate Aldebaran there. It's uh, in association with the Orion constellation and also the Pleiades there. And Antares in the Scorpius constellation too, these uh, fixed stars, royal fixed stars, uh, are um, associated with the uh, bow and arrow there. <laughs> it almost looks like a Scorpius constellation is also having a a bow, uh, just like the Orion constellation has a bow there. But um, apart from that, this is a um, energy that is available and open now through Mars's activation here at nine degrees of Gemini. So this theme is really a open portal for downloads of new light codes. And light codes can be um, manifest in the physical world as a new perspective. So what is it that uh, you're coming into uh, changing your perspective on at this time of this new moon? This may be that open window that is uh, right in front of you uh, and you open it and wow, there is a bigger perspective available to you. So uh, yeah, these light codes are uh, affecting each and one of us differently, but for you, it may be a, a new perspective on something. So next, let's take a look at theme two, healing messages from the heart. So here we have the second theme, healing messages from the heart. And we have a lot to go through here in this theme. We are going to talk about Venus there at 29 degrees of Leo. Very, very powerful position for her at this time, squaring the Pleiades at zero degrees of Gemini. This is um, now Venus's position. If you recall, uh, the last full moon at 29 degrees of Capricorn, we also had Mercury at this position at 29 degrees of Leo. So now it's Venus's turn to be here. And wow, we have Venus conjunct Hydra Alphard at 27 degrees of Leo. And we have talked a lot about Hydra and uh, particularly Alphard, the fixed star associated with life force. And the whole constellation is, but it's uh, getting highlighted over and over and over again, how important it is to connect with our life force. What drives us from a day-to-day -day basis? What are we excited about? What do we burn <laughs> inside for? And uh, it's associated with our passions and our mission here on earth. So over and over again, this point is highlighted in uh, our new moons and full moons. I can definitely see that. Now, we also have a Venus conjunct uh, Leo Regulus, the royal star Regulus here at seer degrees of uh, Virgo. And we also, I, I kind of include Mercury a little bit here. Also, we're going to talk more about Mercury's journey here and messages that we may receive later in August. But first, um, this square between Venus, Hydra Alphard, Leo Regulus, and Pleiades is really symbolizing the continued guidance that we receive, that we are asked to expand into and hearing and listening to, because we are asked to activate our inner wisdom and our a belief and courage in ourselves to be able to stand in our truth and power no matter what. And this is part of uh, discovering that true self that we are um, moving forward with so powerfully in the years to come. Part of Leo Regulus here is also the guidance around heart healing. And this is when we are um, also standing at our truth, putting the crown on our head and say, hey, here is who I am. Especially now when Venus is at this culmination degree of 29 degrees, also linking into the zero degree Virgo of Leo Regulus, there is an ending uh, and a beginning 
zero degree placements are often when we step into something that we have never done before as a soul. And the zero degree is very much the fool card, if you're familiar with the tarot. So we have some sort of rebirth here, especially now when Venus is in this position. We also have Venus squaring uh, Uranus here, who is still conjunct Perseus Algol. And this is the reminder that this is not the time to um, put ourselves in a box. No, this is the time when we are asked to step out of the box. But this uh, square is there here to remind us that the box is no longer. Uh, Uranus is here to shake this all up. And Perseus Algol, we all uh, we have been talking about what Perseus Algol stands for, but it's basically uh, the way I see it. It's ultimately a rebirth. There's more to this theme. And here we have this yod between Pluto and Neptune and uh, whatever planet is uh, passing that point of the end degrees of Leo. Uh, but now at this new moon in Leo, this yod is activated again <laughs> and it's getting tighter and tighter because now we have Venus here at this new moon at 29 degrees. Pluto at zero degrees of Aquarius conjunct Lyra Aladfar and Neptune conjunct Pegasus sheet at 29 degrees of Pisces. So the energy that is um, taken together in this yod between Lyra Aladfar, which is that uh, liberation type of energy, the yearning for peace uh, and Pegasus sheet, uh, very much um, the white winged horse of freedom, right? And then Venus conjunct Hydra Alfard and Leo Regulus. This is the ultimate call for liberation and tapping into that life force that drives us forward, that brings us higher, that uh, allowing us to evolve. So this yacht is super powerful um, in combination with this square here to this cluster of alignments around Pleiades, Sedna at one degree of Gemini now, and Uranus at 26 degrees of, of Taurus conjunct Persis Algol at 26 degrees of Taurus. So yeah, this is really um, a... A great setup for Mercury retrograde that is happening because Mercury is right now at this new moon stationing retrograde and there will be some messages coming through as Mercury returns to the degrees of late uh, Leo here, uh, and I'll give you some dates here because this may be a couple of weeks where we will be receiving the messages that we need to continue on our healing of our hearts. So let me give you Mercury's retrograde journey here because we have Mercury stationing direct right now and being opposite, Mercury is at four degrees of Virgo, opposite the royal star Fomalhaut at four degrees of Pisces at this time. And Mercury is receiving the messages that we will he will drop later on in August for us. Uh, Fomalhaut is also a royal star. So we have a lot of angelic support now also with all the royal stars activated at this new moon, which is also bringing a emphasis to these messages and the support that we have from the angelic realm at this time. As Mercury retrogrades here, he's going to be conjunct Leo Regulus at zero degree of Virgo on August 14th. And this is the time when we will uh, likely receive messages around how to empower ourselves, putting that crown back on our heads, self-empowerment. And then on August 19th, Mercury is going to be conjunct Hydra Alphard at 27 degrees of Leo. And at the on this day, the sun is conjunct 
Hydra Alphard as well, conjunct Mercury then, Mercury retrograde. So, wow, <laughs> this is a powerful day, August 19th. And then Mercury will continue to retrograde and station direct on August 29th at 21 degrees of Leo. So look forward to some messages. It will be associated with our collective heart healing process, but also for you uh, personally to listen to those messages that uh, are specific to you. Uh, likely, this is a very transformational time. Something is culminating, ending, but also something is starting uh, during these times. Month of August definitely is super powerful. So if this wasn't enough, here we have a second grand fire trine between Venus and Andromeda galaxy there at 28 degrees of Aries, and also connecting with the galactic center at 27 degrees of Sagittarius. Wow. And what Andromeda galaxy brings in is that multidimensional perspective that we may be ready to step into. Uh, and Galactic Center, of course, is our main universal driver for our own Milky Way galaxy. So it really is very relevant for us, highlighting also Venus at 29 degrees of Leo here, conjunct Hydra Alphard and Leo Regulus. Wow, this uh, speaks for itself. Uh, and everything is pointing to that Venus placement at 29 degrees of Leo. This new moon in Leo, wow, two grand fire trines going on. This is really an opportunity. Again, that window, maybe there's a double window open <laughs> within you to allow for and bring forth the inner passion, the courage, the uh, enthusiasm that you have for whatever it is that you feel drawn to at this time. This month of August is super powerful in uh, connecting with our heart, uh, allowing that uh, everything else to, to disappear um, that is not important. The new beginning is clear here at the new moon we are asked to bring forth the courage to stand in our truth, to stand in who we truly are. So now is the time to uh, also quiet down, not always be the external force, but also equally uh, go inwards and connect with that heart, connect with our uh, guides, listen to those messages that are coming through in mid-August here, August 14th, August 19th. I would say entire month of, of August is that prime time of uh, connecting with this life force of ours. So enjoy that. Many of you who are uh, listening and watching this podcast uh, are leaders, are leaders for the new earth. And here we have a um, level up, <laughs> uh, the next uh, step up, so to say, in our uh, way of uh, leading next. So feel into that leadership because it's going to require you to step into who you truly are, your true self. The leadership comes from surrendering who we think we are and uh, start to focus on how we can serve uh, the whole. Now, this is a um, exercise in surrender for many, and uh, this is the time where we are coming into connection with that dynamic within ourselves. So here we have Hydra Alphard on the sky map, and you may have seen this image before in previous videos, but I, I could not leave it out because of the importance of Venus's 29 degree Leo uh, uh, alignment here. And also, again, I want to show you Leo Regulus and the powerful heart of the lion here. Just take that powerful face in, in the energy from Regulus at this time, at this Leo new moon. Isn't it beautiful? So next, let's take a look at theme three, Orion energy integration. 
So here we have theme three that I've called Orion Energy Integration. And this theme is also pointing to uh, a number of squares that are happening to the Orion constellation. But first, I want to point out that uh, uh, Mars and Jupiter are conjunct Taurus Aldebaran there at 10 degrees of Gemini and Orion Regal. Jupiter is conjunct Orion Regal at 17 degrees of Gemini opposite the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius and Scorpius Antares at 10 degrees of Sagittarius. So this is uh, another activation and uh, more focus on Jupiter's alignment to Orion Regal at this time. But we're also going to talk about Saturn and Neptune, because the fact that Saturn and Neptune are squaring the Orion constellation all the way from now until the eclipse season, this means something. And there is a window here uh, to integrate e energy from uh, influences of Orion. And all of this is activated now by Jupiter's conjunction to Orion Regal specifically. So here we can also see that Saturn is squaring Orion Regal, Saturn at 18 degrees of Pisces in retrograde now, squaring Orion Regal at 17 degrees of Gemini. But now with Jupiter there, it's an activation of that powerful square to integrate uh, lessons from uh, Orion Regal regards to stepping into empowerment, stepping into self-worth, uh, lessons with regards to um, valuing ourselves, because many of us are carrying past soul contracts that are now uh, up for uh, overturning, so to say. And Orion Regal has contributed to a lot of this uh, karmic baggage, if you will. And the square is encouraging us to expand, to um, it's an opportunity for growth. And to add to that message, we also have Saturn now opposite Orcus, the dwarf planet Orcus, that stands for awareness of our karmic consciousness and our, which is activated by Jupiter's square to Orcus here, uh, exact square at 15 degrees, Gemini and Virgo respectively. In addition, we have the square now between Saturn and the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. This is also highlighted, especially at this new moon, because of the activation of the entire stargate between Aldebaran and uh, Antares as well. So this is a very powerful reminder that we have work to do to integrate our some of our karmic lessons. And now with Saturn in retrograde uh, and hitting, because I was looking up, when is Saturn hitting 15 degrees? And Saturn will be at 15 degrees of Pisces between September 9th and 21st. So the window we have here between now and the eclipse season, the lunar eclipse is on September 17th. So the message of this new moon and this theme is that there is a window between now and the eclipse season to continue to work on integration of our uh, Orion energy soul contracts and especially activated through squares, both from Saturn to Regal, Orion Regal, but also to, from Neptune to Orion Betelgeuse at 28 degrees of Gemini. So these are long-standing squares that uh, are encouraging us to integrate lessons, uh, karmic lessons at the soul level um, over the course of the time. And the eclipses will highlight a culmination of this uh, in end of September, early October. For those who are not familiar with the dwarf planet Orcus, uh, associated with karmic consciousness, it, it was discovered in 2004, and I've highlighted there uh, amongst many other dwarf planets in that little map there. 
And, and the image that I included is from Alan Clay's uh, book that is so good with describing these new energies, uh, at least new to us energies of the dwarf planets that are recently identified. But basically Orcus represents this new awareness around our karmic soul contracts and uh, karmic consciousness, what that is all about. And Saturn opposite Orcus is an important uh, lesson that we are working on as a uh, as humanity to come into contact with that awareness. So this theme three is highlighted here at the new moon in Leo through Mars and Jupiter. The alignments to um, the fixed star Orion Regal for Jupiter particularly at uh, 17 degrees of Gemini and Jupiter at 15 degrees of Gemini. This is the activation to step into that expansion of the work that has been done over time to integrate Orion karmic lessons at the soul level. And we have this window now until end of September, early October to continue to integrate that, whatever that means for you. And you may be curious if you have alignments to the Orion constellation within your own galactic chart. The Orion constellation is occupying pretty much the second and third deacon of Gemini. And if you're curious about your own galactic alignments, download my galactic alignments reference guide. And there's a link in the description box below to uh, receive that guide. Uh, so if you have alignments to the Orion constellation in your own galactic chart, this may be a theme that is uh, coming up even more uh, to be emphasized for you at this time. So in summary, we have a powerful new moon in Leo that brings in a complete new uh, energy as opposed to um, somewhat heavy energy that we have been working with in the Capricorn full moon portal here the past couple of weeks. This new moon in Leo is a, a forward a lighter, um, more opportunistic type of energy that is full of new light codes. And it may involve uh, new perspectives that are coming to you, new messages that is clearing the air uh, as you are now preparing also for stepping into the eclipse season a couple of weeks from now in end of September. And this is uh, an injection of passion and courage and for many, it may open up new uh, parts of ourselves, our heart, that we're ready to step into. Because here we have that window wide open. Overall, this new moon in Leo is an expansion type of energy. And again, a lot of squares in this new moon that allows us to grow, to step into a new perspective and allow us to move forward because we will need it for the second half of the year. Part of this energy is also uh, to help us step into wanting to serve the whole to a greater extent and moving away from self-absorption uh, and self-identification ultimately. So this new moon is a big, important step in that direction. So I have a couple of questions. Should you want to work with this new moon in Leo uh, energy some more and integrate it more into your life? The first question is, what is a new perspective that you're coming into right now? And this may be a new perspective, a bigger perspective on something that matters to you, but it can also be um, that you're noticing that you have a different view on something now than just a couple of years ago. And it's important to notice what is that bigger perspective? How has that impacted your life? Because those bigger perspective or different perspective on something also serves as a measuring stick for um, progress in our spiritual growth. 
The second question is, where are you in the process of connecting with your heart energy? And um, for those who are in the beginning of this process, it can often um, manifest as you are letting go of controlling a situation, let's say, using your logic to problem solve versus stepping into an energy of trusting that you are here for a reason and things are happening in divine timing. That's a big perspective shift, uh, but it also takes experience uh, in our daily lives where we actually apply that shift. When we come into connection with our heart, we also trust our intuition more. We come into contact with our body's wisdom and start to trust that more and more. So this question is about what is it that you're leaving behind and what is it that's starting now? What, what is it that you go deeper with in trusting your path forward? The third question is, what are you integrating at this time between now and the eclipse season? We all have something to work on. And at the soul level, we are always presented with challenges to help us grow. It's the, those squares in our charts, right? <laughs> That's how we know what it is that we need to work on. So what is it that you're integrating into a new perspective at this time? And here, this question is about identifying those tensions, those um, particularly those areas where you feel there is resistance within yourself. That is likely what you're working on integrating into a new perspective where you can feel it flows better. Uh, and the eclipse season is going to accentuate that and highlight it for you later on. But right now, this new moon in Leo is um, a great way to go into courageously looking at what it is that you're integrating, what is it that you're working on, uh, because now we have some really important weeks where energy is available to us to do those integrations into our real life and notice the difference. If you want more personal guidance around how to get in contact with your heart energy, for example, and what your personal energy in your astrology chart speaks of when it comes to heart healing or uh, integration of energy and where you are at at this time in your process, visit me on my website, ulricasullivan.com. Thank you again for listening and watching New Light Living Podcast and these galactic astrology uh, readings that I do for new moons and full moons. I truly appreciate you being here all the way to the end. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I am so grateful for being able to do this work. I truly enjoy doing these videos for you and I can't wait to see you again in another one coming up. Bye.